acceleration is the change in speed. I think that's about it. Okay, so there's obviously a little bit more to it than that. We need to know how we can work with graphs showing acceleration, and we also need to know how we can calculate it. Let's start with a simple example. Here we've got a car that is going on its journey. It begins at zero meters per second. Zero meters per second because it's, it's standing still. As it goes on with its journey, its speed increases and increases and increases. And here you can see the first 10 seconds of that journey. Within those 10 seconds, it's gone from a speed of zero meters per second up to 15 meters per second. Now, in order to calculate the acceleration, we need to find the change in speed divided by the time it took to make that change. So the calculation we're gonna use is final speed minus initial speed divided by the time. So in this particular example, the final speed is 15 meters per second and the initial speed was zero because it started from standing still. So the calculation is 15 minus zero, divide that by the 10 seconds it took to make that journey. So 15 divided by 10 gives us an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second per second. Now those units sound a little bit fishy, don't they? Meters per second per second. But they do actually make a lot of sense. Just think about what calculation we're doing. We're using the speed or a change in speed in meters per second and dividing that by the time, which is seconds. So it's meters per second divided by seconds. However, even then, we actually tend not to use those units because they're not that practical, not that simple, not that nice to work with. We actually tend to use meters per second squared. Now, the reason we do that is it's a little bit nicer to work with, but it's actually exactly the same thing. If we substitute some numbers into those units, we can actually prove that they are the same thing. Let's imagine that we substitute M with the number four and S with the number two. So we would do meters per second divided by seconds would become four divided by two divided by two, which would give us two divided by two, which equals one. If we do the same thing with meters per second squared, substitute m with four and s with two, we'd end up with four divided by two squared, which is four divided by four, which equals one. So we're coming out with the same thing each time. Both of these sets of units are really just the same thing. Now notice it's meters per second squared, not meters per diatomic sulfur, not meters s2, like two swans moving together like a love heart. It's meters per second squared. Don't mix it up. An important point to note with acceleration is that it is literally defined as the change in speed, not specifically the increase in speed. It's quite common for people to reserve the word acceleration for an increase in speed and use the word deceleration to describe a decrease in speed. And this is actually correct. We can use the word deceleration to describe a decrease in speed, but it's still correct to refer to decreasing speed as a form of acceleration. So you might find that maybe one day you're in class and you are doing some calculations about acceleration. You have an example where something is slowing down and you refer to this as acceleration. And then your clever little friend comes up and says, um, I noticed you've said acceleration. Yeah, but it's actually slowing down. So pretty sure you meant deceleration. To which you might respond, uh, actually, acceleration is just a change in speed, not specifically an increase in speed. So what I said is actually scientifically correct. I mean, don't actually say that because nobody likes people who talk like that. I'm just saying if you did, it would be correct, that's all. Let's look at an example. Imagine we've got this car here that's traveling along at 16 meters per second. And it takes 10 seconds for it to slow down to a stop. All we gotta do is exactly the same calculation that we've done already. We've got final speed minus initial speed, divide that by the time it took for it to make that change. So we've got final speed is zero meters per second. Initial speed was 16 meters per second. So zero minus 16 divided by 10. So that's minus 16 divided by 10. We do that maths and we end up with an acceleration. Deceleration. Shut up. An acceleration of minus 
1.6 meters per second squared. Notice the minus symbol, and this is what denotes the fact that it is a decrease in speed or deceleration, if you want to call it that. Lastly, let's have a quick look at some graphs. Now, we've already used some graphs to, to demonstrate the movements as we've been doing our calculations, but it's quite good to be able to look at a few different events on a graph and understand what's happening. Here, we're looking at speed time graphs, which means we've got speed up and down the y-axis and time along the x-axis. In this one, we can see that there is an increase to begin with. That means that the speed is increasing with time and therefore we've got acceleration, specifically in this case, a positive acceleration. It's getting faster. After that, we've got a time where the line goes flat. As we can see, as time increases, the speed doesn't change. It doesn't go up and it doesn't go down. So the object is still moving at a constant speed. After that, we've got another instance of acceleration because the speed is increasing with time. After that point, there is a very, very, very sudden drop to a speed of zero. So if we're talking about a car, then it probably means the thing slammed into something.